Hello, hello, hello. There are people who believe that Kirchhoff Jupiter always works. Thank God, that is not true. If it were true, internet would not exist, GPS would not exist, cars could not drive, airplanes couldn't fly, you wouldn't have electricity in your home, light itself couldn't even exist. So in any case you wouldn't be able to see this video because video cameras would also not exist. I will explain to you today why many people have a misconception and in a religious way believe that Kirchhoff Lupu always works. So bear with me. Kirchhoff Lupu is that the closed loop integral of e dot dl is zero. e is a vector and dl is the vector that is the path that you follow when you go around the closed loop and you have to take the dot product between them. So that means as you go along in the circuit you add all the voltages that you measure, all the voltage differences between points and if you add them all up that's zero. That is Kirchhoff loop rule. Faraday's law says if you go around the circuit, E dot DL, then what you measure is minus d phi dt. And phi is a magnetic flux, and you have to do your own homework again on what magnetic flux is. It's all in my lectures in 802. Lecture 20, I'm sure I cover Faraday's law. If you have a closed loop, you attach to that closed loop an open surface that could be flat, but it could also be like a paper bag, which is open on one side and closed on the other. You can put your hand in the paper bag, it's an open surface. And a magnetic flux through that surface, which I just defined, if that is changing, then Faraday's law says, then it is not zero. Of course, you can write Faraday's law this way, that's the same thing. In other words, Kirchhoff loophole is a special case of Faraday's law. You can do away with it. You can remove it completely. It's for the birds. It's not wrong. You've never heard me say that it is wrong. Yes, I made a video in which I gave it a provocative title that Kirchhoff loop rule is for the birds. What I mean by that is you don't need it. It only works in special cases. It only works when the phi dt is zero. But Faraday's law always works. So the moment that you say Kirchhoff loop rule always works, that means this one doesn't work. You have to replace Faraday's law by this one. You have to change Maxwell's equations. If you say Kirchhoff loop rule always works, it is equivalent to saying the Earth is flat. Think about that. Why is it that so many of you, in a religious way, believe that Kirchhoff loop rule always works? There are two reasons for that. One is in high school. The circuits that you learned in high school never dealt with magnetic flux changes in the way that I just described. I never had even Faraday's law in my high school at all. So in high school, all the circuits that you have are perfectly satisfied 
with Faraday's law, because this is zero, so it also satisfies with Kirchhoff loophole. So they teach you Kirchhoff loophole, and you remember that for the rest of your life. It's brainwashed into your system, you can never let it go. So for you, many of you have a religious belief in Kirchhoff loophole. Trust me, my lectures have been online. My electricity and magnetism lectures have been online since 2004, for 14 years. And the number of people that have written me that Kirchhoff loophole always works is more than a thousand. And the ones that jumped all over me <laughs> when I wrote this video, which I gave the provocative title, Kirchhoff loophole is for the birds, boy, you won't believe it. <laughs> they threw mud at me, which is okay. Keep in mind, when I say Kirchhoff loophole is for the birds, it doesn't mean it's wrong. It's just not needed. That's why it's for the birds. All you need is Faraday's law. Now, I will show you why many of you also believe that Kirchhoff loophole always works because most college physics books say so. They have it wrong. It is embarrassing. It is immensely embarrassing, but I cannot change that. My own book that I used for 802, for electricity and magnetism, my own book had it wrong, John Coley. But all books have it wrong. Halliday and Resnick has it wrong. Tripler has it wrong. Freeman has it wrong. Oehlin has it wrong. So I had to choose one physics college book, calculus based, and I had almost no choice. Of course, Jackson doesn't have it wrong, but Jackson is not a college physics book. It's too advanced. So I'll show you now how they swindle. The sad part is that I believe that they, I really think they themselves believe it that Kirchhoff loophole always works. And that is way more serious because most of these people have degrees in physics and they don't understand Faraday's law. Okay, so bear with me. I have here a circuit which I cover in lecture 20 of my 802 lectures. And you should read the notes that go with Lecture 20. Notes are written as PDF files below the thumbnail of the lecture. I gave lecture 20 on February, on April 1, <laughs> yeah, on April 1, 2002. And so maybe, maybe some of you will think that it's a joke. No, it really isn't. But yes, it was April 1. Lecture 20, watch the lecture, and by all means read the notes. I have here a circuit mentioned in the lecture. There's a battery here, a resistance R, a self-inductor here, and then there is a switch here. All these lines have no resistance. The closed loop integral in this circuit, when I close the switch, is not zero. Kirchhoff loophole doesn't work, period. End of story. I explain in my lecture 20 that this term minus d phi dt is going to be replaced by minus L d i dt. i is the current going through here, which depends on time. You will see how it depends on time. And L is the self-inductance. The units of self-inductance are Henry. But this here is the same as that. And in my lecture, I make that connection for you. So let's apply Faraday's law properly and let us assume that the self-inductance is an ideal self-inductance. It's not so, easy, not so easy to make what we call an ideal one, but in principle it's possible. An ideal one is a self-inductor which is made of superconducting wire. So that means in these wires there can never be an electric field. So there's no electric field in the wires. 
Now, in practice, many self inductors do not have zero resistance, but exceedingly low. So, to explain the basic concept, it's easy for me to assume that there is no ohmic resistance. The physics, if it is exceedingly low, is not all that different. So, allow me to make the assumption that the wires of the self inductor are made of superconductive material. I throw the switch, and when I throw the switch, the current will start with zero. It wants to flow in this direction because this is the positive side of the battery, and this is the negative side. And you remember Lenz's law, which, of course, is the result of Faraday's law. The self inductance will fight the increase in current. And in the beginning it will be very successful. The IDT will be very large in the beginning. But gradually in time, the self inductor will lose that battle. And you will see how that works out using Faraday's law and solving that differential equation. Let's start here. Closed loop integral of E dot TL around this circuit. Switch is closed. Current I at one moment in time is I. So the potential difference from here to there, which is the integral E dot TL from here to there, is plus I R. Now I come to the wires of the self inductor and I go inside the wires, not outside, but inside the wires. They have no resistance, so it's zero. The integral E dot TL going through the wires of this ideal self inductor is zero. These lines have also zero resistance. I come here, this point has a lower potential than that one. The difference is V, so it is minus V. So the closed loop integral of this circuit is I air minus V. That's what it is, keep that in mind. And finally tells you that it is minus L D I D T. If you solve that differential equation, you will see very nicely that indeed at t equals zero, the current is zero, it will gradually increase, and then if you wait long enough, the current will remain constant. And that is when the IDT has become zero. Notice the IDT here is zero. And therefore, the current is simply V over R, because this has no resistance. So, V equals IR, so I is V over R. Solve this equation as I do in my lecture 20. And you will find that I as a function of time is V over R. Remember that's Ohm's law when the IDT is zero. Times one minus E to the power R over L times T. When T is zero, this is one minus one, so the current is indeed zero. When T is very large, infinitely large, this term is zero. So the current is V over R and will remain V over R all the time. So you see this differential equation is very nice, it gives you an analytical result which is completely consistent with your intuition. The current starts with zero, builds slowly up and ultimately reads the value of V over R. It's all explained in my lecture number 20. Read the notes, I repeat that, read the notes. Now, we go to John Coney, or any other person, any other physics college book. And they deal with this circuit. And instead of this equation, they use Faraday's law and write it this way, which is perfectly okay. So this equation here is Faraday's law, 
is exactly the same as this equation. But they say that this is the closed loop integral of e dot dl, and they say it is zero, and then they say because Kirchhoff loop rule works. So they apply Kirchhoff loop rule, they think. So they write it this way, and they say Kirchhoff loop rule is zero, staring you in the face that it is zero. It's staring me in the face that it is dead wrong. It's Faraday's law. It's not case of Newton. Newton's second law, F equals MA. Do we agree that it is correct? Well, F minus MA is zero. That's the same law. It doesn't mean that F is zero. If I have five apples in my left pocket and three in my other pocket, I have eight apples in my pockets. Five plus three is eight apples. So the total number of apples in my pocket, minus eight, is zero. That doesn't mean that I have zero apples in my pocket. It means that I have eight apples in my pocket. Right here, this is not the closed loop integral of e dot dl. This is the closed loop of integral dl. So this is Faraday's law, and it is not Kirchhoff loop rule. If you were so silly, by the way, the reason why I feel very bad about this, because these people who write these books have physics degrees, but they really don't understand Faraday's law. And what they sell you is utter nonsense. It's just wrong physics. That's bad. Yeah. It's very bad. So these books persuade you that Kiel's of Loophole always works. And thank God it doesn't. Faraday's law runs our entire economy. Not Kiel's of Loop Rule. It is because of Faraday's law that we can convert coal into electricity, nuclear energy into electricity, fossil fuel into electricity. Kiel's of Loop Rule cannot do that. So I, read my, I repeat myself, anyone who says Kirchhoff loop rule always works is equivalent to saying the earth is flat. Now get ready for the following, which is kind of cute. I'm going to put over this self-inductor, I'm going to put over it a A voltmeter. That is. These are the wires. These are the wires. This is the plus side of the voltmeter. This is the minus side of the voltmeter. Now, in this circuit, Kirchhoff loop rule obviously doesn't work because there is this. LEIDT in there. The current at any moment in time, which in the beginning changes of course, through the voltmeter is way lower than the current through here, because the resistance of the voltmeter is hundreds of mega ohms. So I call that I of V to remind you that it's nothing to do with this I. So if we do the closed loop integral here, using Faraday's law, because Kirchhoff loop rule obviously doesn't work, and if I start here, then I get IV, that is the current through the voltmeter, times the resistance through the voltmeter. This is the similar term that we had here. And now we go through the self-inductor, which has no resistance, remember, no ohmic resistance, so plus zero. But now, according to Faraday's law, this is not minus LDT, the IDT, but it is plus. And the reason for that is that since the current here is going in this direction, then it is minus L dIdt. If U dL is in this direction, but if U dL is in this direction, then it is plus. If you want to think about that a little, it's rather trivial. So this now is Faraday's law. And so you see that this voltmeter 
shows you LDIDT. And if your voltmeter had high time resolution, you would see that indeed the voltage would gradually would start very high and then would gradually go down to zero. When the, LD, the IDT becomes zero, the voltmeter goes to zero. Why am I showing you this? Take the closed loop integral of E dot dl through this curve, through this closed loop. There is no magnetic flux change in that loop. So Kirchhoff loophole works there. No question. So if you use this path, that will be the proper equation. Because this is the LDIDT going through the voltmeter. If now you think that Kiss of Lupo always works, my God, then I have failed bitterly as a teacher. Because follow me, in this circuit, closed circuits, fire they work, Kirchhoff does not work. In this closed loop, fire they works. And Kirchhoff doesn't work. In this one, Faraday works and Kirchhoff also works. Kirchhoff loophole is only a very special case of Faraday's law. It doesn't always work. Thank God it doesn't always work. Because as I said, light couldn't even exist. And you wouldn't be able to see this video. So there are two reasons why people have a religious belief in Kirchhoff Lupul. One is brainwashed in high school and remembering that. And the other one is that most physics books have it wrong. Again, not Jackson, maybe not even in Griffiths, but in all these College based physics books that you can buy on the web, every single one has it wrong. They do not understand Faraday's law. You remember the famous words of Shakespeare's Hamlet to be or not to be, that is the question. If I use that idea, to agree or not to agree with the master, that is not the question. The question is, do you know how to use Maxwell's equations and do you understand its implications, even though they may sometimes be very non-intuitive? I will do another video which will deal again with Maxwell's uh, with Faraday's law and I deal with induced EMF. It's all by itself. It's very intriguing and which many of you also have no good feeling for it. In my lecture 16 at the very end of 802 I do a dramatic demonstration which is done now all over the world And that demonstration shows that two identical voltmeters connected to the very same two points in a circuit measure totally different values. One nine times higher than the other, but the polarities are even reversed. The demonstration is mind-boggling. But thousands of people don't believe it. So I will deal with that in my next video, but I thought I would first do this one, namely that gives of Lupo is only a special case of Faraday's law. It's fine with you, with me, if you want to continue discussing this issue on my YouTube channel. By all means, 
write each other back and forth, whether you agree or disagree with each other, no problem for me. As I said, for me to agree or to disagree, for me is not the question. I will not contribute to your exchanges. If you ask me questions, I will probably not answer. I will have other people answer for me. You may get the wrong answer. That's fine with me. My contributions are loud and clear. Lecture 20 of 802 is loud and clear. And this video itself is loud and clear. My contributions cover 94 lectures that I gave at MIT. And I did more than a thousand demonstrations. And the one in lecture 16 is only one of the thousand. So forgive me that I do not, that I will not contribute to your discussions. If you don't want to be friends with me anymore because of that, I will forgive you. It's the price I pay. I have to pay for teaching you correct physics. And so I'm willing to pay that price. Have a nice day and take care.